Good afternoon, welcome to the Market Wrap for 8th of July 2022. Stuart Williamson here at the helm. Why are we doing this? Just to tell our clients and those interested in real estate what's going on. So this week, what are we going to be covering? The recession. It's on its way. Be prepared. It's as simple as that. All the economic storm that has come together has created a recession which will come into play next year. Why do we know this? Look at commodity prices, they took a real beating this week and it's a clear signal that investors believe recessions in several major markets are now very likely. Global Brent crude prices, to take one example, fell 9%, its biggest daily fall since March. The consensus is coalescing around expectations that recessions in markets including the US and the UK are coming. Though those recessions are likely to be relatively mild. Drop-offs in consumer spending are likely to weigh on inflation, so that'll bring it back, leaving the worst predictions of aggressive cycles of interest rate hikes unfulfilled. This is research according to Knight Frank, the Financial Times and the Daily Telegraph. Traders were betting only a month ago that the US Federal Reserve would take rates above 4% to levels not seen before, since before the financial crisis. Those bets have now come down to a peak of 3.3% in Q1 2023, with rate cuts now penciled in around the summer. That's according to Bloomberg. So let's just look at how financially stable is the UK before moving on to what effect that will have on the UK property market and in what the government can do to try and prop up the market. The Bank of England's biannual review on the stability of the financial system, which was published on Wednesday this week, was unequivocal. unequivocal. The economic outlook in the UK and globally has deteriorated materially, they said, and there are a number of downside risks, most notably from Russia's invasion of the Ukraine and the vulnerabilities in the Chinese property sector. Major banks, however, according to the Bank of England, have considerable capacity to support lending to households and businesses. And the bank warned against restricting lending to defend capital ratios or capital buffers. Excuse me. And they go on to say, such excessive tightening would harm the broader economy and ultimately the banks themselves. When answering questions from the media following the publication of the report, Deputy Governor Sir John Cunliffe said he expected the distress to rise next year and then went on to, to say, and I quote, but we don't expect it to go back to the levels before the financial crisis. The key takeaway from his speech was when asked what levels, what level rates would need to hit to push many households into distress and default, Mr. Cunliffe said you'd be looking at 5 to 7 or even 8% on the corporate side and that picture is not that dissimilar on the mortgage market side. So that seems quite relaxed really. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm taking a sip from my cup, I do apologise. That seems quite relaxed. A base rate much above 3% most of the market thinks will be felt sharply in the housing market. So Knight Frank went out and said, okay, what does the public think? The results of their latest residential property survey on, the, on, th on this 3% quote was that seven out of 10 respondents were concerned about an increase in mortgage repayments, while close to a quarter, 24%, were slightly concerned about an increase 47% were concerned or extremely concerned. Among those not planning to move within the next year, close to a third cited either the rising cost of living or increasing borrowing costs as the main reason. So the Bank of England is quite relaxed about it, doesn't seem to be a big problem. People in the street, perhaps because they're not as well educated as people in the Bank of England, see it as a major problem. This research goes on to say that more than half of respondents said the value of their home would rise in the next 12 months. An increase in value between 1% to 5% was the most popular option, with 35%. In second place was no change in value with 31%. 
Meanwhile, eight out of 10 people said energy efficiency of their next home purchase is more important to them than it was a year ago due to the rising energy prices and environmental concerns. So that's quite a lot of concern um, in the marketplace for people in the street, but perhaps not amongst the institutions behind it all. So is the housing market going to cool down? The latest data from Nationwide tells us house prices have continued to rise, although at a slightly slower rate, probably in response to these increased costs of debt and the cost of living squeeze. In part though, it also reflects a shortage of stock remaining on the market. Zoopli reporting that stock levels in May remain one third lower than the average for the past five years. So where does that basically leave us? As I said, apologies for being a long market wrap, but basically it leaves us that without substantial government intervention, increasing the number of higher loan to value, low deposit mortgages, it's gonna be very, very difficult for the government to pull off this getting back to people owning more property. And if the government does manage to do it, there's still a risk it could spur a further bout of high price growth and it's accompanied by a supply side response through the higher levels of house building in the areas of the country where demand is greatest. The levelling up agenda has seemingly shifted the policy focus away from housing delivery in areas where affordability is most stretched with the risk that the dream of home ownership becomes less, not more, achievable. So basically what you have is where it's around London, you've got people moving with the levelling up scenario up to the north. Now you're going to get that becoming more and more expensive. So people who are actually in the north won't be able to buy because of all the people coming up and getting these cheaper mortgages. That's the case. So the concept of increasing the number of people owning properties is not going to occur unless simply they just build more houses. So in summary, with the recession coming, the Bank of England says it's going to get worse in 2023, but not as bad as the global financial crisis. They don't see interest rates going very high, i.e. 5%. They're looking at 3% or so, but the public is concerned about that, even the Bank of England isn't. Finally, the current shape of the housing market will not change unless they start building more property in the levelling up areas. You know, 300,000 houses a year is not enough. It's been calculated by the Financial Times that 450,000 houses per year over the next five years would bring it back into track. There we go. Thanks for listening. Do subscribe, do like. Um, apologies if it's a bit too long and too boring, but I think it's good factual information to know. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.